I've been coding with Cursor for a few months now and it blew me away. I thought it was just hype because there is no way it is as good as they say, right? Well, it kind of is and I'm going to show you why. For those who don't know, Cursor is an AI code editor. It is basically a fork of VS Code that has AI built into it. The AI that Cursor has feels really native to the IDE. It feels like it is a part of it. But anyway, so let's take a look. Uh, this is their uh, landing page. And basically, as you type, Cursor shows you basically suggestions. And all you have to do is tap, tap, tap and it auto completes the rest of the code for you. Before I get to the demo, I wanna shout out Christian here. I was hesit hesitant and skeptical of Cursor uh, and how good it is, but he kinda pushed me to give it a shot and he showed me a demo of the Cursor agent in action and it was mind blowing. So shout out to Christian for that. So now let's get to it. Like I mentioned earlier, Cursor is basically a fork of VS Code. It is essentially VS Code with a lot more capabilities. So this is a basic uh, Flutter project, the startup project that you get when you do, when you run Flutter Create. There's nothing fancy to it. And one thing I don't like about the startup project it is that it has too many comments because it is made for newbies, but I wanna get rid of all the comments. So instead of doing that manually or using a fancy macro or a shortcut, I'm gonna have cursor to do that for me. So you do a command I that is going to open the compose mode and I'm going to run it in the agent mode. So it has a normal one which works I think as a chat GPT. It kind of gives you all the suggestions and you just copy paste and you do your thing. But with agent mode it actually will make the change for you. So let me just say that uh, remove all the comments and I'm going to add a context for this file. By the way, as you can see here, it it automatically shows you the files that you have open, the tabs that you have open. So I'm gonna tell you to remove all the comments from the main.dart file and run. Let me zoom in just in case this is a little bit. And that was it. Now it is actually showing me all the changes that it made. So let's take a look at this. The red lines are the deletions that it is making to the file. As you can see in here, it was actually able to see, it was able to pick up all the comments and delete them. But these changes are not made yet. So what I can do is I can go here, I can either accept the changes or, can or I can reject the changes with this. I really love this part, I really love it. It kind of works like Git, where it gives you the uh, the option to basically uh, pick which line, which changes, which changes you wanna put in. So I'm going to accept this change and boom, it deleted that comment and down here, I'm going to accept this one as well. Boom, all the comments are gone. And the same, same thing. Or I can just, instead of doing all these changes one by one, I can go here and hit this accept. Basically, it was going to accept all the changes that it made with this response. Sometimes it does, it does make changes to multiple files, which I don't really like using this one down here. I like going to this file. I can click right here. I go to that file and pick and choose all the changes that, that I want to merge, that I want to put in. That's pretty much it. But for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to accept all the changes. And this is it. It removed all the comments from this file. Okay, and now I wanna get rid of all the comments in the PubSpec file. What I can do is go here, add a, the PubSpec file as an additional context and run the same command. Remove all comments. And let's watch it and see what it does. That is, that is pretty much it. Okay, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed here. It wasn't able to detect all the comments here. It also did the same thing. Okay, since I already have the main .dart file here, it did the same again. <sighs> okay, let me remove the main .dart file, reject all the changes, and do it again, remove all the comments only from the pop spec 
from the pub spec YAML file this time. Hmm. All right, so it is failing miserably with the YAML file. I don't know why. It did. Th it actually did this earlier today, and it did it in my in my in one of my projects. So uh, it's not that reliable, I guess. These were basic changes that any AI should be able to do. But cursor is actually a lot more powerful than this, and it did help me fix some of the bigger issues that we Flutter developers face when it comes to building Android apps which are the Gradle errors. Unfortunately, I can't demo that today because my Android build is not broken. And it is fortunate actually that I don't have to deal with that. But anyway, cursor is a great choice when it comes to dealing with those build errors that are tedious to fix that are easy, but waste a lot of time to get, to get right. I'm really a big fan of that. And I also used it to change the iOS app bundle ID for one of the projects that I was working on. It actually did great. So now let's see if it can take this screenshot, these two screenshots, and if it, if it can turn them into code. Pull the screenshot. Yeet, a detached use theme. Keep trying, you get it done. It actually created a feature profile presentation directory, which is nice. Oh, screens, okay. So I'm going to blindly accept these changes without looking into them. And let's see what we got. All right, so this is what my main the Dart file looks like. And here is the full screen that it just added. Okay, so I am not a fan of these methods. Yeah, I would rather have these as a as a standalone widgets instead of this, but I will take it. So anyway, so let me run the project and see what it looks like. Come on now. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, what I can say is that it actually did a pretty good job. Okay, yeah, the icons look different, but they actually look good and the background the pattern is a little bit off but then again these actually look good from the looks of it this is actually a pretty solid result i wasn't expecting it to get it this good on the first try because usually it does struggle with the screenshots and conversing figma designs into a into an app but this is really good i think they I don't know what they did, but it wasn't uh, the last time I tried this. It wasn't this good. I am really impressed. I just want to say that uh, the cursor team, you guys did a great job for a great job with this one. But let's examine the code. Okay, I'm going to nitpick a little bit because I do believe that it is not that good. So let me zoom out and take a look at the code here. All right, so it did, it did set the background. Okay, to white. A bar white okay yeah all right so uh, you don't really have to do that here you can get them from the theme but that's fine and also set the icon color to black which is not which is unnecessary because uh, on a light theme they're black by default so the same same thing here as well but uh, other than that, it is it is really solid, and uh, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I am impressed. I'm impressed. I don't have to sell you on this one because the results speak for themselves. And yes, I do recommend Cursor to experienced developers who are looking to push their productivity. And I do recommend Cursor over GitHub Copilot because Cursor is where you will find your productivity. But I do not recommend this or any AI tool for this matter. To beginners who are still learning to code, who are who are trying to improve their coding skills. If I remember correctly, this is the second AI tool that I recommend. The first one being GitHub Copilot, which is no longer the case. But you get the point. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.